Yo, what's up guys? It's Noah here. Uh, and in today's video, I'm going to be talking through a couple player props I like on prize picks for tonight's NBA slate on Tuesday, uh, January the 9th. Um, we've got five games tonight, so it's another you know, sort of mid-size slate for Tuesday. Uh, we're going to talk through two early props, guys, that I do like for Tuesday's slate. There's not a ton on the board right now. Um, as I'm making this video, I think there's, what, three games posted? Three of the five games are up. Uh, but I was able to find two early props that I did like for this Tuesday slate. So as always, we're going to talk through each one of these two plays and share why I like them. Before we do get started, though, um, if you guys do enjoy these prize picks videos, if they do help you out, make sure you hit that like button down below. Hit that subscribe button if you guys have not yet. And if you are new to prize picks and if you don't have an account over on prize picks, uh, you can sign up linked down below in the description or just use that promo code NOAA when you do sign up for prize picks and you will get your first deposit matched up to $100. Also, do want to give a quick shout out to Sleeper. We have a partnership with Sleeper as well. And if you guys don't have an account over on Sleeper, you can download the Sleeper app either on the App Store or the Google Play Store. If you have an iPhone or, or if you have an Android, they do have an app for both. Download that Sleeper app, make a deposit, and when you use promo code NOAA over on Sleeper, uh, you'll get your first deposit matched up to $500. Sleeper does match your first deposit up to $500 when you use that promo code and if you don't know what Sleeper is, what they are, uh, they're an app similar to Prize Picks, and they're similar to a lot of the other DFS pick 'em apps you see around the industry. You're able to win up to 100x your money on Sleeper. Uh, Sleeper offers a multiplier payout system. So what that means is you, you know, you'll get like a 1.7, 1.8x multiplier. Uh, you know, sometimes it'll be lower, sometimes it'll be higher. It's all dependent, you know, dependent on the odds of the play hitting. But because Sleeper does have a multiplier payout system, and because it's not a fixed payout system like Prize Picks, obviously on Prize Picks it doesn't matter if you take the over or the under on a prop. For the most part, everything pays out the same. Well, on Sleeper, uh, the payouts will change based on whether you take the over or the under. But that allows Sleeper to offer props that you, know, you don't see on other sites like Prize Picks. For example, with NBA, you can take double double and triple double props over on Sleeper. And some of those, you know, if you're taking the over, you can get like a really high payout. Um, so if you want to check out Sleeper, guys, if you want to see what they do have to offer, again, download their app, use that promo code NOAA, and get your first deposit matched up to $500 over on Sleeper. Uh, but let's go ahead and talk through our plays for Tuesday, what I'm liking uh, as a first look for today. Uh, I do want to recap the two plays we gave out in Monday's video before we talk through Tuesday's plays. So for Monday, gave out two picks for Monday. One of them uh, did, uh, did hit, but one of them did not, unfortunately. Uh, we did take the under on Tyus Jones, nine and a half rebounds plus assists. Um, I'm kind of surprised that we hit that because Tyus Jones had nine assists, but he had zero rebounds. I guess we got lucky with him getting no rebounds, uh, which allowed us to hit that under on nine and a half rebounds plus assists. I was hoping that that Wizards Thunder game would, would be a blowout, and of course it wasn't. It wound up being like really high scoring and really competitive. Uh, and then we took the over on Giannis's rebounds prop at 12 and a half. Giannis. Played a ton of minutes, 38 minutes, I think, but only had 10 rebounds, uh, came up short of his rebounds props. So that was tough, man. Tough. It's been super frustrating lately. I know the picks have not been doing well. I think we've, I, I want to say, like, we've lost six straight picks, like six straight two-pick entries, which is just disgusting to think about. But we move on to today, man. Just got to keep focusing, keep grinding, just putting out the, the best plays I can. Hopefully, you know, at the end of the day, even if our picks you know, aren't hitting, I'm giving out some useful information for you guys, something that you can maybe use for the future. Uh, but obviously the goal here is to you know, win, the, win the entries, and that's something that I've not been doing lately. Really going to try and get right, though. Um, hopefully today is the day we can finally get back on track. So uh, let's talk through the two picks I like for Tuesday's slate. The first one we're going to take a look at is going to be a PRA prop. And I'm liking another under here. We're actually going to be taking two unders today. Now, this one, people are probably not going to like. The, the betting public is probably not going to like this one. We're going to be looking at Paulo Bencaro's PRA prop, 42.5, really, really high line here. And we're going to be taking the under on 42.5 PRA for Paulo Bencaro. Now, if you look at Paulo Bencaro's last five games, obviously, you know, it doesn't look good for the under because he's been playing really well lately. Uh, 44 PRA against Phoenix, 45 against Golden State. Uh, 52 against Sacramento, 53 against Denver, 49 against Atlanta. You know, right now, Paulo Bencaro has had a huge role just because the Magic have been kind of shorthanded. They don't have Franz Wagner right now. They don't have Wendell Carter Jr. However, they are getting back Markel Fultz. Markel Fultz did return last game. Now, he only played 15 minutes. He was really limited off the bench. 
I'd assume Markel Fultz plays a little bit more today than the, the 15 minutes he played last game, probably plays like 20 minutes here. And with Markel Fultz coming back, you know, that does hurt Paulo a little bit. Fultz is someone that can handle the ball, can take, you know, assist opportunities away from Paulo. He is also someone that can soak up usage. He can take shots. So not, you know, with Markel Fultz coming back, that definitely is going to, you know, impact Ben Carroll's role a little bit. He's still going to have a big role. But really what we're, you know, we're doing here is we're selling high on Paulo. Paulo has been absolutely balling lately, but he has had some good matchups lately, you know, facing Atlanta, facing Sacramento, even Golden State, I think is kind of like a good matchup. Now, it, it is crazy that, you know, he was able to do so well against Denver. Denver has been one of the better defensive teams this season. However, if you look at some of these games, so like the last three games, Paulo has played over 40 minutes now in three straight games. Two of the, his last three games have gone to overtime. The Atlanta game went to overtime, and the Sacramento game was to, uh, went to overtime. He did play over 40 minutes in regulation against Denver, but I don't think we can just project Paolo to play like 42 minutes every single game. I mean, this is a player this season who's averaging like 34 minutes per game, I believe. Um, let me pull it up just to confirm that, but I'm pretty sure he's averaging like 34 minutes per game. Uh, let's see. Yeah, 34 or 35 minutes per game for Paulo. So more times than not in a competitive game, Paulo's playing like 35, 36 minutes. He's not playing like 40, 41, 42 minutes like he has been lately. And also, this matchup is terrible for Paulo. I mean, Paulo's going to go up here against the Timberwolves, the the best defensive team in the league, number one team in defensive rating this season. The Timberwolves just have a ton of really good defenders. Jaden McDaniel's a really good defender. Anthony Edwards can defend as well. They also have a very good rim protector in Rudy Gobert. The, the Timberwolves are a great rebounding team as well. Gobert's a really good rebounder, you know, good at boxing out, um, you know, keeping guys off the boards. And one of the reasons Paolo has had some huge PRA games lately is because his rebounding numbers have been way up lately. Like if you look at his rebounds lately, um, his line, his rebounds prop today is set at seven and a half. He's had some big rebounding games, 10 against Atlanta, 10 against uh, Denver, 12 against Golden State, or uh, yeah, 12 against Golden State, nine against Sacramento. This does feel like a spot where rebounding could be a little bit harder to come by for Paolo facing a Timberwolves team that again is really good at rebounding. You know, I'm pretty sure they're top 10 in rebound percentage this season. And it's also just a really tough matchup against a very good defensive team. It's going to be a slow-paced game. Like right now, this Orlando-Minnesota game, I'm pretty sure it has the it has the lowest total on the slate of all the five games today. Uh, right now, the spread the spread in this game is sitting at like four and a half, five. So it's projected to be a close game. But the total, um, from what I'm seeing, is sitting at 218, uh, which is fairly low for today's NBA. You know, a lot of a lot of the NBA totals you see today are like in the 230s, the 240s. Well, this total is just sitting at 218. These are two really good defensive teams. Orlando's been really good defensively this year. Uh, Minnesota's number one in defensive rating. This feels like a, a good spot to sell high on Paolo. I know Paolo's been playing really well lately, uh, but this is still a player that I think more times than not is someone we can project for less than 42.5 PRA, even without Franz Wagner, even though he has seen a bigger role lately. The usage has been up for Paolo. Uh, this line does feel a little bit inflated, and given the tough matchup here, I like taking the under on 42 and a half PRA for Paulo. And I was looking around at some sports books. I always like to, I like to take a look at the sports book odds and see, you know, kind of what they're, you know, favoring before I do start recording all these videos and making my selections. And I was looking at, you know, some PRA props for Paulo on like DK Sportsbook and on Pinnacle. Most uh, sports books right now are favoring the under on this prop around minus 120, minus 125. So I uh, do like this play quite a bit. Paulo Bancaro, less than 42.5 PRA. If you don't want to take this because Paulo's been playing so well lately, you know, by all means, don't take it. You know, Take the over if you want, but I like the under here. I think this is a good spot to sell high on Paulo in a, in a very tough matchup. So that's the first play I like for tonight. And then the next play I like is going to be another under. And we're going to look at Demontis Sabonis, uh, less than 23.5 points. So Sabonis, you know, over his last five games, the, the last five betters, they're going to like this one a little bit more. Sabonis has only gone, he's gone under this line in four out of his last five games. He's only gone over once. And the one game he went under, he or the one game he went over, he barely went over. He had 24 points. You know, this matchup against Detroit on paper looks pretty good. Detroit defensively this season, I mean, they've not been great. They were a really bad defensive team last season. Detroit started off the season, like, defensively not being that bad, but... Eh. Really, ever since then, I mean, their, def their defense has definitely, you know, not been good. I mean, this season, Detroit does have the fourth worst defensive rating. However, Detroit has been much more giving to, to guards this season. Detroit's a, a very bad pick-and-roll defense. I think this sets up as a really good spot for the guards for Detroit and not as good of a spot for DeMontis Sabonis. You know, now that the Pistons do have Jalen Duren back, 
You know, Duran is definitely a capable defender. He's obviously a much better defender than Marvin Bagley, than James Wiseman. I mean, both Wiseman and Bagley are horrible defensively. Well, now that they have Duran back, Duran should match up for, with Sabonis for a lot of the minutes that he plays. I don't know if Duran will be out there for every single minute that Sabonis is out there, but for a large you know, portion of the minutes that Sabonis is on the floor, he should be matched up with Jalen Duran. And again, Duran is not a bad defender by any means. Uh, the rim protection for Detroit's been better with Duran back in the lineup. So I don't think this matchup's that great for Sabonis. Um, I think it's a much better spot for the guards. Plus, this is a game that does have blowout risk. Now, for whatever reason, I don't know why this is, but I swear every time I take an under in a game that I think has blowout risk, the game never winds up actually blowing out. It winds up being competitive. So because I'm taking an under in this Detroit-Sacramento game, this game's probably going to be like super competitive and it's going to go down to the wire. But this game does have, I believe, an 11 and a half point spread right now. The Pistons are without Kay Cunningham. So, man, it, like, it feels like the Pistons probably get blown out here without Cade, without their best player. But maybe they play well at home. I would doubt it, though. Like, I think this is definitely a spot where if Sacramento is really cl clicking, if they're making their shots, I think Sacramento could really, you know, blow this Pistons team out. I know Sacramento's a team this season that it feels like whenever they should blow teams out, they don't. Um, seems like they kind of play down to their competition. But this does feel like a spot where Sacramento should be able to easily win this game uh, with the Pistons shorthanded, missing their best player. Um, and I think the Pistons, without Kay Cunningham, they'll probably play at, like, a slower pace. Um, this season, in terms of pace stats, the Pistons are playing at the seventh fastest pace in the league, but I think without Cade, you probably will see their pace come down. If you look at their last game after Cade got injured, um, obviously it's only a one-game sample, so take it with a grain of salt. But last game, without or with Cade getting injured, Detroit ranked about middle of the pack in pace, uh, 98, uh, uh, I believe 98 points per possession uh, per 100 possessions. I think that's how they calculate pace on the uh, NBA website. So I think this spot's you know neutral for Sabonis, if not relatively poor, plus the blowout risk you have here uh, makes me like this under quite a bit. And on DK Sportsbook right now, uh, looking at around some, at some sportsbook odds, DK Sportsbook actually has this prop minus 130 favored to go under. So the early sportsbook odds are favoring the under on this points prop for Sabonis. I do like this play quite a bit. Sabonis has gone under this line in a large majority of his games this season, 25 out of 35 games this year. Sabonis has been under 23 and a half points. So these are the two props, guys, that I do like uh, for Tuesday's NBA slate. Two unders we're going to be rocking with today. Paolo Bencaro, less than 42.5 PRA, and Demonstra's bonus, less than 23.5 points. Um, if you guys are going to tell me on these two plays, hopefully we can hit both these plays and make some money tonight. As always, appreciate you guys supporting the content, supporting these prospects videos. Hit that like button if you did enjoy. Hit that subscribe button if you have not yet. And again, if you guys are new to prospects and if you don't have an account over on prospects, Sign up, use that promo code NOLA, and you will get your first deposit matched up to $100 when you sign up for prize picks with my promo code. But that's all that I got for tonight, guys. Good luck on the slate. Appreciate you guys watching the video. As always, we will see you in the next one. Peace.